Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. Before we start, yes, I'm working to get that dungeon video to you all ASAP. It now looks like that'll be Monday instead of today, but yeah, the video was just a bit too long for me to complete it in good time, and I didn't want to leave this one either rushed on the editing or half-assed on the script. It's a larger video, so we do need a little bit more time on it. Understandable, perhaps, but I mean, you know, I know we want to keep this daily content rolling. So yeah, slightly different schedule, but this is covering something that I wanted to go over anyway, so here we are. As a quick reminder, on June 6th at 12pm EST, we've got the GCX Charity Marathon block within their stream supporting St. Jude. Come along to twitch.tv slash GCX event and you can get yourself special emblems just for donating. Stuff that is pretty awesome, exclusive swag. Bungie jumps in and does this from time to time, and they're doing it this year. There's, I believe, one for $20 and one for $60. So yeah, awesome stuff. Come along and claim your emblems. My stream will be playing Destiny, along with the t slip gang. So yeah, we look forward to seeing you. Remember to come and support the kids at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Anyway, back to the lore. So, the big threat of this season comes to us in the form of the nightmares that Callus has dredged up from the Lunar Pyramid. Today I wanted to answer a few fundamental questions about them. Namely, what are the nightmares and how can we stop them? The answer to what the nightmares are is actually fairly well explained by Eris in this season's lore. Take a listen. It appears the situation is far more complex than I first believed. The Leviathan has become an extension of the Lunar Pyramid, channeling feelings of shame and regret into reality. The Pyramid did so as a security system, driving away those who would tamper with it. But what is happening on the Leviathan? This is purposeful. Malicious. As the nightmares on the Leviathan spread, it could threaten Earth and beyond. Callus's bond with the Pyramid endangers all of us. Crow was unprepared to face his own demons when we attempted to sever it. And though I may be able to counsel him through the next confrontation, that will take time. You should return to the Leviathan. Continue harvesting the nightmares and disrupting Callus's plans. We will speak again soon. So the nightmares are essentially the personification of trauma, dredged up as a defense mechanism by the pyramid. The darkness that has brought them to life is one that is based, as darkness commonly is, around memory, and the ideas of past trauma being dredged up is therefore not too surprising. Back in Shadowkeep, it was made clear that these nightmares were incorporeal, and whilst they could be defeated, they couldn't really be killed, they couldn't be destroyed, and they still can't really be killed now, but they can be contained, and this is where Eris comes in. She has taken control of the Crown of Sorrows, and through her study of Dark Hive magics and Apocrypha, she's been able to craft a solution to the nightmares that chase us. The final objective of the scheme that Eris has concocted is to bind the nightmares that we contain within the Crown of Sorrow, imprisoning them and their energies there. Eris explains more about this process after she finished binding us to the Crown of Sorrow in the seance that we undertook with Zavala and Crow. Take a quick listen here. It is done. We are inexorably bound to the power of this hive artifact, and to one another. The Crown of Sorrow was once forged by Savathun's hand, designed as a psychic prison, binding the mind of its bearer to her will. Now it serves a new witch. You have become a reaper of darkness, dooming slain nightmares to imprisonment within the crown. Callus has begun to forge a bond between the Leviathan and the dormant pyramid buried on the moon. I do not yet know why or how, but with enough imprisoned nightmares, I can use their essence to invoke a ritual to sever those connections Callus is forging. For now, return to the Leviathan and seek out concentrations of these new nightmares. 
Destroy them, and bind them to the crown. As I warned Zavala, nightmares wear familiar faces and speak with familiar voices. They manifest our darkest fears. You will assist Crow when it comes time to perform the first severance ritual. We both know what form his nightmare will take. It will do everything in its power to stop you. Be wary. So our plan is pretty clear. Contain the nightmares within the Crown of Sorrow, and then Eris will be able to use their essence in order to sever the greater nightmares that Kallus has dredged up to fight Zavala and Crow, nightmares that are very personal to them. It does require that these two characters, and eventually when she inevitably has to join us, Keitel, joins us in this attempt and really does face their fear. But when that does happen, the power of these nightmares can be nullified, and we can now use the power of darkness to fight darkness. Severing enough of these connections will hopefully allow us to break Kallus' control over the Lunar Pyramid, and prevent whatever joining method might be undertaken. But to imprison the nightmares within the Crown of Sorrow, it's clear that we need a device that is capable of acting as a bridge between the nightmare manifestations and their imprisoning vessel of the Crown. It's at this point that we need to talk about that thing that Eris is holding in the seance, that thing that we plant in the ground whenever a nightmare containment public event comes along, that thing that is our seasonal artifact, the Nightmare Harvester. The short version of it is that it's a device invented by Eris to assist with the containment of nightmares. The long version is found in the lore of the seasonal artifact itself, which is that same Nightmare Harvester. It gives us some intriguing insights into the nature of the foes that we face, and the methods in which we must now battle them. Take a listen to this. It is safe. Sub-Vanguard net, hidden port redacted, cipher validated. Transmission origin redacted. Receiving terminals, Vanguard Commander, Vanguard Ray. Designation, Eris 223. Archival access granted. The relic on Mars reveals much about the crown, and Savathun's corporeal form. I have unwound a precious few mysteries that I believe can aid us. The Crown's penchant for ensnaring cognition is well known, but the function by which it does this is a manipulation of the darkness tethered by hive incantations and ritual. It is not unlike how the pyramid projects nightmares from troubled persons or phantoms from places of great loss. I am not so foolish as to attempt to access or wield the Crown directly. We've all seen where that leads. Instead, with assistance from a trusted colleague, I have constructed a medium through which we may safely channel the Crown's influence and bind nightmares until their essence can be contained for further research. My colleague dubbed this medium a Harvester, an apt denotation. Until we know more about Callus' plans, this is our best course of action. I advise all fire teams undergoing deployment to the Leviathan to be outfitted with Requisition Device Harvester. Once they attune to it, possession of a Harvester will offer a moderate level of warding, and more importantly, interaction with the apparitions projected by the Pyramid. Interestingly, in moments of high energy concentration, the Harvester, as if by reflex, will manifest a weapon through the wielder's will. I have included a list of materials required for the fabrication of a harvester. May it be the tool that turns the tide. Trust. Eris Morn. P.S. Fabrication requirements. Note, hazardous materials require level 3 oversight. Fundamental osmium, 6 ingots. Petrified egregore, 1 sample. Solfire ichor, 3 high-density canisters. Dark Ether, one high-density canister. Tome, Hive, Stricken Tablet, Heuristic Apocrypha, Sat T. Tome, Hive, Tablet of Command, Arcana and Sigils, Sat DR. Osmium Ringlet, Prefab, dot STL. Order of Operations, dot Log. Warnings, dot Log. As a quick note for those things at the end there, the two tomes of Hive Apocrypha coming from Sat-T and Sat-DR, I believe stands for Saturn Titan and Saturn Dreadnought, two locations where we have recovered a great deal of information about the Hive. 
It's here that I really start to worry about Eris's scheme. While she's taken great care not to interact with or directly wear the Crown of Sorrows, she has been able to make sense of it, and is now regularly using it as a repository for these nightmares. This effectively makes the Crown of Sorrow a little bit like that thing in Ghostbusters where they store the ghosts that they capture, the only difference being that Eris then takes that deposited power and uses it to sever specific nightmares, or at least to try the ritual that will do so. The thing that spooks me about all this stuff surrounding the Nightmare Harvester is as follows. Firstly, that Osmium ringlet that's mentioned within the materials of the Nightmare Harvester is of a similar design to the one found from the Taken King. For those of you that don't know, Touch of Malice was an exotic scout rifle from the Taken King's raid, King's Fall, and it had, you know, the oh-so-minor property of literally containing the Taken King's remnants and soul. You know, that thing at the center of the rings in Touch of Malice? Yeah, that's what's called the Ravenous Heart. And it's long been speculated, given what's learned in the Books of Sorrow, that the ravenous heart within the Touch of Malice is in fact the last vestiges of Oryx that remain. After all, Touch of Malice was very much a part of his own plan that Eris enacted. So, a device similar in nature to the Touch of Malice is a little concerning, but the way that the rings are being used here as another means of containing essence does make a certain degree of sense. After all, this is a nightmare that's being contained, it's a personification of dark energy and trauma, and it does seemingly have personality to it as well. And when these are contained, it does appear that it's a little bit similar to containing any remnants of one's dark malice. Maybe a soul. It's not clear if that is what a nightmare is. A lot of this is still guesswork. Eris states, also, that she's been able to uncover precious few secrets regarding the Hive's mysteries in Apocrypha, but she was assisted in the construction of the Nightmare Harvester with a colleague of some kind. A trusted colleague, as she puts it. What that means in Eris's context is unclear, but I think it should be clear that the close colleague is deliberately not named here, and the fact that it is so vague in Keiji is what really concerns me. As best we can tell, that colleague might simply be the Drifter. There is enough talk in the Seasonal Armor about them experimenting with the uses of Egregore spores, after all, so it's not at all impossible. But there are a few other possibilities for who this might be, and that's where things terrify me. First of all, the Touch of Malice is unaccounted for, and a colleague willing to bind nightmares in some manner using something similar to the Touch of Malice, I can't help but feel like there's something darker afoot. I wonder whether this colleague might in fact be Toland. I wonder if there might in fact be a lie behind Toland. I wonder if it might in fact be something to do with the original Taken King, but that's a stretch that's so outlandish I'm not willing to put too much theory behind it. All I'm saying is, regardless of what's going on, I don't trust the colleague involved, even if it is just the Drifter. I feel as though we're messing with something that gives the enemy too much insight into us. Egregore spores are a key part of the Nightmare Harvester, and it's been noted in other lore, which I'll get into, that Egregore spores allow darkness, and more specifically, perhaps the Witness, a vision into where they are activated. If we're doing this, then we are perhaps giving the Witness a far too direct line of sight into some of our most vulnerable but important characters, the Commander of the Vanguard, for example. This is something we need to take care with, even if it's something where it does provide us a degree of warding against the Pyramid's nightmares, it's something that we don't completely understand. Fundamental though it may be in the process of harvesting nightmares, I do believe that there is a little bit more to this than has been originally let on. And of course, there is the possible risk of containing nightmares within the Crown of Sorrow, a hive artifact that Eris now supposedly controls, but has always been problematic. Something doesn't feel right, and as we connect more about this mystery together, I think it's important that we remember that Eris is mostly well above board with everything, and is trustworthy. But more recently, she has become a little reckless or driven, and has tended to ignore protocol in favor of simply accomplishing her ends. The best example of this is most recently with the Duality Dungeon, where she completely undercut Vanguard Protocol to keep Ikora from stopping her. This is one of those moments where we see Eris's drive potentially morphing into something dangerous. 
I feel more and more like we have invited the oldest friend in Destiny to assist us, only for her to potentially be dangerous to us, in some manner or another. I do hope that that's wrong, and it is up for interpretation, but I think that in true fashion, time will be the real deciding factor here. Eris has always been in control. I just hope that she remains in control. Something that Zavala has constantly been warning her about, and something that we've always kept faith with her about, but something I hope that our faith is not misplaced on. Anyway, that's all of the stuff we know about the nightmares and nightmare harvesting. Hopefully that gives you a little bit more context on what's going on this season, and the reasons why we're doing the core activities, namely, of course, the containment public event, and Sever, the mission where we go in and we have the individual narrative experiences. Also, hopefully it gives just the tiniest bit of context on duality, as we still don't understand Callus's plans, and we essentially need to contain them for the time being. Duality was a way of understanding Callus's plans, and we'll have more video lore for you guys on that tomorrow. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and leave a like. Remember, GCX Charity Marathon stream on June 6th. Be there. It's going to be a fantastic time, and we are going to raise some money for the kids, and you can get some Destiny emblems out of it. Also, of course, remember, if you want more Destiny content, hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe, and leave your own thoughts down below in the comments section. But as per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me, and that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Rudasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.